Hi everyone, um, today is day 5 of my 30 Facebook Lives in 30 Day Challenge. Um, so I finally finished my um, 3 day seminar on um, consciousness and being, you know, being in my super genius and everything. So that was a really, really good seminar and um, yeah, and there was, there's just a lot to, you know, think and cont contemplate on. Um, so today I want to talk to you um, about exploring uh, further the um, the concept of ego, I think, because um, in my last video um, I spoke about pacifying the ego or pacifying the dragon, and um, one of uh, one of my friends actually um, asked a really really good question. So thank you so much, Elise, for asking um, the question. And um, the question was, is there more on ego that we can um, teach our kids? Um, and can we teach them at a young age that it's the ego that's talking? And at what age can they step back and recognize this? Now, I think um, that's a really, really great question. Um, and I think what we need to understand about the ego is what is the ego, you know, and, and for me, the ego is our identity. It's the thoughts, it's the perceptions, it's the feelings that um, we have um, that shape the world around us um, and also shape the beliefs that we, that we sort of um, end up having because of these, um, these thoughts and feelings and perceptions. Um, so... So can we teach them at a young age that it's their ego talking? I feel like, yes, you can, but you don't have to label it as the ego. What you can do, and what, and this is why I want to teach all these soft skills, because actually all these soft skills amount to them really understanding themselves. And when they really understand themselves and when they are really self-aware, that's when they can identify, you know, is, is this just my ego talking or is this, you know, is this just, um, uh, you know, what am I trying to say? Yeah, basically, is this, is this just my ego talking? You know, is this reality? Is this fact? Um, so I guess, um, you know, with, with teaching them, um, about the ego, it starts with teaching them about emotional intelligence, you know, being emotional intelligent and actually um, allowing them to understand their emotions better. Um, so um, that's actually the first step and, you know, and, and, and really allowing them to recognize, you know, um, and pinpoint what sort of emotions they are feeling. So um, I think I'll talk, I'll expand more on emotional intelligence on another topic, but what I really want to just um, allow you to grasp is how um, your child can sort of develop um, their awareness of ego um, through, um, through this process. So firstly, it's to understand emotional intelligence and you can teach your children about emotions at any time. And the best time to actually teach them about em about emotions is you know when they start to understand and when they start to have an awareness of the world around them you know you can teach i mean like you know you can speak to you know your 18 month old or you know your six month old and i understand that they can't um uh, talk back but they can understand um and be and that's actually how they're shaping their world and so you can you know, you can say mummy's feeling happy, you know, because and what, whatever reason you're feeling happy. You can show them what happiness looks like. Um, you know, mummy's feeling angry and you can you can express why you're feeling angry. Um, so that's that's how you can start off by teaching emotions and emotional intelligence. Um, and then I guess as they grow up and as they get into, um, I guess, their formal learning, uh, formal schooling years, you can then start to allow them to express their emotions and, and be more aware of their emotions. And that's where self-awareness comes in. And it's, it's, it's really spending time and talking to them about, you know, um, you know, when they're chucking a tantrum, you know, allowing them to be okay in that space. And then 
once they've calmed down, ask them, you know, how did it feel to chuck that tantrum and why did you do that? Um, and then actually talk through the process of, you know, how could, you know, how could we improve on this um, in the future? So, um, and at what age can we step, can they step back and recognize this? I mean, you know, honestly, it's, as soon as they understand their emotions, as soon as they understand their feelings, um, as soon as they understand, you know, what they're thinking, that's actually them starting to be self-aware. And that's actually them starting to be able to step back and um, recognize this. So, um, I mean, like, you know, we don't always have to talk about the ego and label it, you know, because ego, what is ego? It's basically our thoughts and feelings and our identity. So, um, yeah, really, really get them to be self-aware. I mean, you know, an example that um, I can think of at the top of my head would be, um, I remember, um, you know, I remember um, I have a child in my classroom and um, she has such loving parents and what came out of her mouth was actually really surprising, um, you know, since, you know, like her parents are such loving, such caring, such gentle people. And um, it, there was one time she um, she said something really rude and um, and I just wanted to sort of um, let her know that that was really rude and you know I mean she is a very sensitive soul and she started crying and um, so you know I said it was it's okay to feel sad it's you know and and you feel sad because you've identified that that is really rude and she didn't she then suddenly started to to cry again and she said can you please not tell my mom and dad because they won't love me anymore now that is a huge claim that's a bold claim and that's 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 her starting to shape the world and you know and 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 her believing that if she did anything wrong her parents won't love her now um and i know for a fact that that is something that her parents would definitely not have said to her so we had to we had to go back and we had to really and I really had to understand where it was all coming from so we we spoke about you know how it felt um why why she would say that um uh, that her parents um didn't love her you know and you know she then started recognizing actually my parents didn't say that about me it's it's you know it's all what i'm starting to think and you know and then and then and then we had to throughout the year um you know do little things and say little things that reminded her that she was loved and um um yeah it's it's actually you know, really powerful because what we're trying to do and, and honestly, what we're trying to do, um, in recognizing our own, um, I guess, thoughts and feelings is that we're trying to weed out the stuff that we don't want. You know, even as adults, we do that. We, we weed out the stuff that we don't want and we try and plant, um, stuff that we do want, um, and but 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 that comes with a lot of training and that comes with a lot of awareness awareness um of what you're thinking um how you're thinking it um because a lot of the times we subconsciously um you know tell ourselves that we're not good enough and um that i don't know that we're not loved um what else um that um you know that we have to be in control of life you know, and the ego is um, is something that needs to know all the time, that needs to be in control all the time. So really, how we can help our kids is to actually um, try and allow them and to and to um, help them, um, you know, weed out the stuff that they don't want. Um, you know, as soon as you catch them saying something like "I can't do it," you know, ask them. What do you want from um, at, as the end result? You know, do you do you want to know that you can't do it, or do you want to know that you can do it? Do you want to be able to to do it? You know, and most of the time they're going to tell you that they want to do it. They just can't. 
And, and so that's where you can start teaching them from. That's where you can start planting the seed of, yes, you can't do it now, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it in the future. You just can't do it yet. Um, you know, and, and, and asking them to really be aware of why they're saying that to themselves, you know, um, and, and actually talk through the process of, you know, how they can start to be able to um, start doing it, you know, reminding them that the process isn't as simple as a click of a finger and then suddenly they're able to um, uh, do it, um, you know, reminding them that the the process requires a lot of effort, you know, um, and and practice and, and um, yeah, I guess, um, yeah, I hope that that answers your question, Elise. Um, I mean, in terms of, you know, labeling it and teaching them the word ego and, um, and where, you know, and consciousness and all that. I mean, like, um, you know, if you've listened to me and if you understand, um, you know, what I teach, it's all developmental. So there is a time and a place for, you know, understanding and labeling, um, ego, but, uh, I think to wrap this up and to and to really just understand what we need to do first and the process, it's basically to understand um, emotional uh, their emotions and to raise their emotional intelligence and then to um, allow them to become more self-aware. And that is talking through the process of whatever they're feeling at that time. I mean, like, there are other ways of uh, raising self-awareness, um, such as uh, meditation, um, you know, mindfulness uh, for children and all that stuff, um, which I think I'll uh, explore in um, future videos um, with you. But um, right now, yeah, it's just really answer answering Elisa's question um, and just, yeah, help your child to weed up the, you know, weed out the stuff that they don't want. So, and to plant things that they, they want, because everything starts from a seed, like, um, Tran, uh, like Lucy said the other day. Um, and you know, every perception, everything, um, starts from a seed. And if we don't weed out, um, you know, whatever we don't want in our head, that seed, that seed grows into, you know, lots of, bad stuff in the future um so what we do want is to plant positivity um to plant um a growth mindset um and yeah and these are the things that i'm so passionate about teaching children because i feel like these are the things that really make them successful and when i say successful i don't mean you know that they're going to be president of the united states in the future um or you know, a doctor or whatever it is that, you know, what I'm saying is that success comes from, you know, being aware of all these things and being able to change your mindset on them and reframing that mindset and um, so that you can be at your full potential. And that's what success is for me. So, you know, whatever your child wants to do in the future, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as they're using these skills, um, as long as they're practicing um, how to move forward, they are successful. They are, um, you know, living their full potential. And, and I think that's the best thing we can ask as, par you know, ourselves as parents, um, you know. So anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Andy, for tuning in. Um, uh, and congratulations on the wedding. Um, so anyway, take care, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.